Today, I'm going to show you how to wirelessly stream any video file type using the free open source VLC media player to your Fire TV. I've used Windows 7 and Windows 10 with this setup, which allows you to stream any MKV, FLV, AVI, etc. file types located locally on your PC from any Mac drive, external storage device like a My Passport, any NAS drives, and any flash drives connected directly to your PC, as well as external video links. I will also be showing you how to stream DVD discs from your PC to your Fire TV. This video setup can be accessed by any streaming device on your home Wi-Fi, meaning you can watch the same streamed movie on a Roku in the living room, an Apple TV 4 upstairs, an Android in the kitchen, or an iPad while sitting in the backyard. This is not like a typical casting or mirroring setup because your video is basically being streamed to your home Wi-Fi with any streaming device, i.e. a Roku, Apple TV 4, Fire TV, Smart TV, Chromecast, iPhone, or Android can access the same video stream, either one or all, simultaneously. I do recommend that you set up Chrome Remote Desktop on your PC so that you can pause the streaming video as needed from your phone versus being tied to your PC. I will have a link in the description box below of its setup details. Please note, the stream will stop running if you try to fast forward or rewind it. So let's get started. First, you will need the VLC software installed on your PC. I will have a link in the description box below for the videoland.org website. Please note, I will be posting a future video on how to stream multiple videos from local and remote sources and how to stream your PC's desktop, displaying websites, etc with any version of Windows, so subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post. You will also need to add the Fire TV VLC app. Okay, so once you have VLC installed, you will need to configure a video stream. I'm going to demo three streams, one from a local video file on an external storage device, another for a video file link from an internet website, and finally a stream of a DVD disc playing on a PC. Now, some of the reasons you may experience jumpy or stuttering video streams is because your computer's CPU may not be powerful enough to stream this way, not having enough internet bandwidth, or due to the resolution of the video you are streaming. I will also be showing you how to configure lower SD resolution profile streams if you are experiencing major buffering or stuttering issues. I will be doing a future video on how to find, retrieve, and stream multiple video links from the World Wide Web into VLC's video playlists of TV shows, movies, etc., and watch them on any Fire TV from sites like archive.org as well as how to wirelessly stream your PC screen. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And now I've opened up the VLC media player and I'm going to add a file from the external My Passport storage device attached to this PC and stream it to my Fire TV. Here are the required steps. Select media, then stream, then click the Add button from the File tab and navigate to the file you want to stream. Click the Stream button on the bottom. Click the Next button. Change the drop-down menu from, from File to HTTP and click the Add button. <laughs> the default port is 8080, but you can change it if this port is already in use by your PC. Add any path name you wish. The source PC and target streaming device must be in sync as far as the reference port and path. Click Next. Change the profile from the drop-down list to video h.264 plus mp3 brackets ts close brackets. Click the Next button. Select the Stream All Elementary Streams checkbox. And finally, select the Stream button. Check the bottom left-hand side of the screen that the video counter is incrementing. If this is not the case, the stream was not properly set up. A couple of ways to verify that the stream is working before accessing it from your Fire TV is by opening up a second VLC instance, as well as by inputting your streaming HTTP live stream details into your iOS VLC app from your phone.
but first you need to identify the IP address of the PC streaming VLC by going to the DOS command line and typing in ipconfig, I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G. The IP address of my PC is 192.168.1.25. Verify that the stream is working. As mentioned, you can also use the VLC app on your phone to validate the stream by selecting network stream, then inputting http colon slash slash at your IP address colon and the port and the path name you entered. Make sure your phone is on the same Wi-Fi as the streaming PC. Select Open Network Stream. After validating your stream, close the second VLC instance where you selected Network Stream or Control N. Check in Task Manager that you don't have old VLC.exe programs still running if you have issues connecting. Now, let's go to the Fire TV VLC app, then navigate to Browsing, then Stream. Input HTTP colon slash slash your IP address colon and the port and path you entered previously. Then press OK. The at sign is not required in front of the IP address in the Fire TV VLC app. Also, the VLC Fire TV app does not highlight the selected HTTP URL from the drop-down list. You must count the number of required down clicks, then press the OK button. Next, I'm going to stream an external website's video link to my Fire TV. You can pick up either MP4 or OGV links from this particular site to stream. You can open the video's link in the browser to verify that the links work. Here are the required streaming steps. Select Media, then Stream. Then select the Network tab. Enter the external internet file you want to stream. Click the Stream button on the bottom. Click the Next button. Change the drop-down menu from File to HTTP and click the Add button. Input the same port that you previously used. Add the same path name you previously used. Click Next. Change the profile from the drop-down list to video dash h.264 plus plus mp3 ts click the next button select the stream all elementary streams checkbox and finally select the stream button check the bottom left hand side of the screen that the video counter is incrementing if this is not the case the stream is not was not properly set up please do the previously mentioned stream validation then click on this stream from the vlc app Finally, I'm going to stream a DVD disc running from my PC. Let's navigate to the DVD and select Play. To see the DVD's titles and available chapters, select Control-L to minimize. 
This streaming setup is best for DVDs that contain a single movie or TV show DVDs that have a play all track. Otherwise, you would have to set up a stream for each individual track. Here are the required streaming setups. Select Media, then Stream, then select the Disc tab. Select Starting Position, Title, and Chapter. Select the Stream button on the bottom. Click the Next button. Change the drop-down menu from File to HTTP and, and click the Add button. Click the same port that you previously used. Add the same path name you previously used. Click Next. Change the profile from the drop-down list to Video-H2.64 plus MP3 TS. Click the Next button. Select the Stream All Elementary Streams checkbox and finally select the Stream button. Check the bottom left-hand side of that screen that the video counter is incrementing. Please do the previously mentioned stream validation, then click on this stream from the VLC app. I'm now going to show you how to create an SD video stream profile, which you can tweak as needed if you are experiencing major buffering or jumpy video issues from the default profile settings. Here are the required steps. First, select Media, then Stream, then select the File tab. Click the Add button to select any video. Click the Stream button on the bottom. Click the Next button. Change the drop-down menu from File to HTTP and click the Add button. Input the same port that you previously used. Add the same path name you previously used. Click Next. Select the Create a Profile icon on the far right. First tab you'll see is Encapsulation. You should have MPEG-TS selected. MPEG-TS should be selected. Click the Video Codec tab. Select Video Checkbox. The encoding parameter should be Kodaks H-264. Leave bitrate at 800 kilobytes per second. This is what changes your profile resolution. 800 is an SD stream, but you can reduce it to even less if you still have jumpy video issues. Click on the Resolution tab and change scale to 0.25. Finally, let's update the Audio Kodak tab. Select Audio Checkbox. Encoding parameters should have Kodak MP3 and sample rate set to 44100. Now give this profile a name and select the Create button. You can go ahead and select your newly created profile from the Profile drop-down menu and click Next. Select checkbox Stream All Elementary Streams and click the Stream button to test. Going forward, if you want to stream at a lower resolution, select your newly created profile from the drop-down menu instead of the profile Video-H264 plus MPTS. If you find this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and share it which helps me gauge interest and decide which future videos to post next. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching.